Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests of the fifth Fimon Bell Days, my name is Lars Wiefstedt and I warmly welcome you today on behalf of the Log Regio branch network of logistics for the Lübeck region to our lecture sequence on the topic sustainable transport and mobility green corridor. Before we go into today's topic and I introduce the speakers to you, let me give you a little more information about the Log Regio branch network of logistics here in the Lübeck region. LogRegio was founded in the year 2007 as an initiative of the Lübeck Economic Development Corporation. Today, the branch network LogRegio has still 28 company members. These include companies from the fields of freight forwarding, ports and shipping companies, as well as organizations such, such as the economic development agencies in the Hansebelt region, the Lübeck Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Technical University of Lübeck. With its work and activities, uh, the branch network Log Regio pushes the goal of giving the logistics industry and the Lübeck region even more sustainability, legitimacy and visibility. Proactive, uh, proactive location marketing for the logistics region of Lübeck is one of the core tasks of the branch network Log Regio. The logistics region of Lübeck is strengthened and positioned as a relevant and attractive logistics location on a local, super-regional, national and international level. In a nutshell, Log Regio focuses in its activities and work on the targeted exchange of information and the implementation of specific projects in the interaction of shippers, logistics service providers, transport carriers and where innovative solutions are required also with the universities located in the Lübeck region. The focus at LogRegio is clearly on the proactive marketing of the Lübeck logistics region. But let's come back to today's topic of this parallel session of the Fehmarn Belt Days, Sustainable Transport and Mobility Green Corridor. Ladies and gentlemen, the goal is clear. The development of environmentally friendly and sustainable transport solutions and the avoidance of fossil fuels and freight transport. That is wanted politically and socially. This goal is right and important. And let's not kid ourselves, there will be no going back either. The current climate discussion is forcing the actors in the freight transport sector to develop alternative drive technologies and innovative transport concepts in order to guarantee sustainable freight transport in the future. And of course, this applies to all modes of transport be it road freight, rail freight, or sea freight. But how can such technologies and concepts for the individual modes of transport look like and be implemented successfully? What has already been implemented today? What is currently being worked on? And what developments can be expected in the future? Today, we want to shed light on these topics in the context of this event using three company examples from our region for the modes of transport, truck, rail and ship. Alternative drive technologies are already being used in our region for future mobility and freight transport. For example, in road haulage, the liquefied natural gas drive, the electric overhead line drive, or the modern combustion engine drive. In sea freight transport, the use of hybrid ferries, and also in rail freight transport, the technological progress continues steadily. Therefore, we are very pleased to present you our three speakers and experts for the modes of transport, truck, rail and ship, who will give you a detailed insight into current and future techno technological developments in the field of these modes of transport. I would like to take this opportunity to warmly welcome Mr. Jörg Ulrich, Managing Director of European Cargo Logistics GmbH from Lübeck, Travemünde, on the subject of rail transport. Today, Mr. Ulrich presents his lecture on the topic rail freight in the Hansebelt region. On the subject of road freight transport, I'm pleased to be able to introduce you from Rheinfeld in Stormann, Mr. Mark Bode, Managing Director of Spedition Bode GmbH in KKG, and Mr. Bode will present his lecture on the subject of future mobility from the perspective of a carrier. Last but not least, I would like to welcome our third speaker at this parallel session, Mr. Marco Möller, Mr. Marco Möller, Manager, Special Projects at Scandlines Deutschland GmbH. Mr. Möller gives an outlook on the technological developments in ferry traffic and gives his lecture on the subject of sustainable ferry operations in the ScanMed corridor.
But before I hand over to our first speaker, let me make a few brief comments on the technical process of this parallel session. Over the next approximately 40 minutes, we will present you the three presentations by our speakers, one after the other. It will not be able, uh, um, possible to answer any questions during the presentations or immediately afterwards. Instead, please write down your questions into our chat here on this parallel session. Uh, first of all, please uh, write down the name of the presenter um, who, to whom your question is addressed. And afterwards, please write your question in the chat, either in German or in English language. After the three presentations, we will start answering your questions. Thank you very much for your attention. And now let's get started with our presentations. And so I'm now looking forward to the first presentation of this parallel session on the subject of rail freight in the Hansebelt region. For this, I once again warmly welcome Mr. Jörg Ulrich, Managing Director of European Cargo Logistics. Jörg Ulrich is Managing Director of two subsidiaries of Lübecker Hafengesellschaft, the European Cargo Logistics GmbH and the Nordic Rail Service GmbH. The focus of his passion for logistics lies in the optimization of transport change, the development of rail freight and forwarding activities on which European cargo logistics and Nordic rail service are also primarily active. Mr. Ulrich is a member of the plenary assembly and head of the transport committee of the Lübeck Chamber of Commerce and Industry. In addition, he sits on the supervisory board of the Port of Hamburg Marketing e.V. and is active as chairman of the board of the branch network Log Regio. Dear Mr. Ulrich, thank you very much for supporting us today as a speaker and expert on the subject of rail freight transfer here in the Hansebelt region. Mr. Ulrich, I will now hand over the floor to you and we look forward to your presentation. The virtual stage is yours. Thank you very much. Yeah, dear Lars, thank you very much for the warm welcome. I hope you can hear me and you can see the presentation. Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, then let's hurry on and go through rail freight in the Hansebelt region. Um, I like to, not that fast, please. I just um, like to start with an bird eyes view on, on rail freight in general. Um, so uh, rail is considered to be the most sustainable and environmentally friendly way of cargo transportation. Um, that's nothing new, um, but uh, maybe an important start. You can also see um, on the left hand side um, the comparison of greenhouse gas emissions caused by freight transport and the clear advantage of the rail freight or the rail sector. Talking about rail, um, we need of course um, rail infrastructure um, to uh, move goods on the railway and um, that's a picture or a map um, drawn by the Chamber of Commerce um, in, in Lübeck or in Schleswig-Holstein showing the um, rail, inf rail infrastructure in Schleswig-Holstein. You see the yellow um, um, link, which is um, of course the Fehmarn Belt link also passing um, part of Lübeck here um, further to Hamburg and um, the orange uh, one, um, this is um, coming from Denmark, Padborg also to Hamburg. But these are the more or less the only two major international rail corridors which are electrified. Um, what you can see is that all the traffic, international traffic has to pass Hamburg and has more or less to pass one bridge here in the south of Hamburg crossing River Elbe. And um, there is um, um, actually um, a huge concentration um, on um, that area. Talking about rail infrastructure, growing railway traffic, um, and of course, um, impact of the Fehmarn Belt um, link, the fixed Fehmarn Belt link. It is um, necessary to improve and to enlarge um, the um, rail network. And there are two options. Um, one is, of course, or let's say there is, of course, one um, um, improvement of the existing uh, link here between Lübeck and Hamburg. And there is a bypass which is currently electrified from Lübeck um, via Schwerin um, going more easterly um, down to this house in, in Germany. And last but not least there is um, which is colored green here um, uh, the connection from Lübeck to Lüneburg which is um, not electrified only for diesel engines with a heavy 
commuting um, uh, traffic, um, public transport, um, so more or less no cargo trains are using that corridor today. Um, another slide showing general figures about railway. Um, um, the, you see most of the traffic is still on the road and uh, on the red side here 18, some figures say 19% um, on the cargo traffic, uh, of the cargo traffic in 2019 have been transported by rail. Um, so still um, a lot uh, potential to grow. Um, if we look um, into what, what is important to state, uh, if we talk about railway traffic in Germany, um, to state that um, if we talk about cargo traffic, um, more than 50%, uh, even more than 55% um, is carried out by private railway undertakings and only 44% of the cargo traffic has been transported um, by Deutsche Bahn Group in 2019. So railway, and in particular um, transporting cargo on rail, is not only a DB cargo business, but is um, uh, in a liberalized, liberal, liberal market um, business um, for a lot of private railway undertakings. Coming a little bit closer to uh, what is locally um, already done or uh, what kind of traffic we see locally. Um, if we look into the Hansa Belt region, we have um, more or less two um, different parts of rail traffic. That is um, port related traffic and that is um, local supply um, uh, of, of uh, mainly bulky goods um, to local consumers or um, local um, shipped by local shippers. Um, if we talk about the local supply, that is grain, that is fertilizer, that is building materials, um, such kind of cargoes. If we talk about port-related um, traffic, then we do have intermodal traffic. We have um, new cars. We have um, um, also conventional traffic for forest products, steel, and, and similar more um, general cargoes, um, but also some kind of bulky cargoes. You can see here that the railway percentage of the modal split in the port of, for the port of Lübeck is more or less already 25%, so um, quite a bit more um, than on the general German level, which I have shown before. So we are not behind, but um, better than, than the average in, in Germany. What um, do we see as um, uh, different um, transports? We do, as I mentioned, we do see um, conventional rail cars. That is about 50 trains per week um, um, uh, calling the port or let's say the local um, uh, suppliers or receivers here. Um, direct connections to Maschen, um, to Mannheim, and um, which, which is both more or less single wagon traffic. And then we have, of course, also block trains um, for, for bigger flows there with conventional rail cars. The second part is um, the intermodal service, about 100 trains um, per week. Um, and there is a dense network um, of uh, intermodal trains and a, a smart combination of rail and sea transport. Um, uh, in order to save time and emissions compared to a pure road traffic. Um, the, I uh, can show you the intermodal network on the next slide, which gives you an idea um, that um, Lübeck is um, the kind of hub connecting Scandinavia, um, Finland, um, uh, Russia, Baltic states. Um, on the northeastern side, um, so to say, um, together um, with um, combining it with um, Germany and the south and western Europe. And um, this is today done um, uh, connecting ferries um, with um, um, the rail, as mentioned before, but we also do have about 12 trains um, per week going today, Lübeck via Denmark um, to Sweden. So that would be for sure the first ones um, to be shifted to the fixed Fehmarn belt link. Um, whereas the conventional rail cars is more or less um, slightly growing, uh, partly even steady development, and we do see um, a, a straight growth of um, intermodal rail freight units. So in the last um, five years, we have seen an increase of about 
50% of the units um, transported um, by railway instead of um, road um, to and from the port. So a slight dip in 2020, a little bit caused by um, um, the COVID um, situation. But in general, uh, we do see a, a major um, uh, increase in there. And also, in, in, if we talk about uh, 21, um, the first um, three, four months, we do see an increase there of about 18% in, two, in 21 uh, compared compared to um, 2020. So um, the um, what I want to stress here is that railway traffic is not only existing in the Hansebelt region, but it is growing um, and uh, it's also continued to grow. So what are the prospects? Um, if the, um, the forecast for the um, uh, rail freight corridor Fehmarn Belt link um, is about 80, uh, 68 trains, additional cargo trains per day, uh, which is, has, of course, a heavy impact on the infrastructure, um, um, which I uh, slightly touched before. But as said, also the um, uh, port traffic um, will continue to grow. And that is not only um, um, the port traffic, uh, even if there is um, impact um, by the fixed link, um, for example, for the Swedish traffic, there will be um, traffic to Finland and, and uh, Russia, um, Baltic states, but also to certain Swedish um, destinations. Um, which uh, will go via um, the C rail interface port. And um, uh, to mention here, um, the um, fixed uh, link gives, of course, also the opportunity for new products like rail feeders from Lübeck to Copenhagen or other cities in the Nordics. Again, talking here about cargo trains, of course. So um, in, um, as a result, um, the extension of the rail infrastructure south of Lübeck is a prerequisite to cope with the growing rail traffic. That means we have to do something there. There will be additional trains, um, not only um, directly um, via the link, um, but also um, via the port. And um, the second um, uh, issue, which is very important, is that we need an efficient rail connectivity between um, the uh, fixed Fehmarn Belt link, of course, the queue is for Germany, German abbreviation here, and um, the um, uh, port rail tracks, as mentioned, in particular for all the private railway undertakings um, who are not using Maschen as their um, um, center for building trains. So um, uh, for the private rail undertakings, it's a must um, to have the, uh, you to get use of the infrastructure in Lübeck um, for for building trains to and from Scandinavia as well, and connecting that with ferry traffic. And and therefore um, we need um, um, or we require an additional infrastructure which is um, enabling a direct connection between um, the port area and the intermodal terminals, which are located here and here. Um, and um, the uh, fixed Fehmarn belt um, um, connection um, so that um, we uh, can run the trains directly um, out of the port, um, for example, a Copenhagen feeder um, onto the rail track um, and not need to have um, complicated shuntings here somewhere in order to uh, connect um, uh, uh, trains and cargoes and wagons coming from this direction and coming from this direction via sea. Yeah, coming uh, to my last slide here, um, the conclusion um, already today, um, rail freight plays a very important role, a role in the Hansebelt region. Um, uh, we are today already on the level which is predicted for um, uh, in the number of trains, which is predicted for the start of uh, the opening of the um, uh, fixed link. So this is more than um, eight years to go. And just if we continue the growth of the intermodal traffic um, there, then it means um, in the next eight years about um, 10 to 15 uh, cargo trains more per day um, on the rail track um, during the phase of construction works and extension works of the existing rail track. 
And uh, but of course um, we um, have to extend um, the rail infrastructure in Schleswig-Holstein and of course uh, in Hamburg for both passenger and freight um, in order to cope uh, with the growth. And uh, my last sentence here is the bottleneck for Schleswig-Holstein is Hamburg, is the crossing of the River Elbe. So that is the, the biggest need. And uh, if we look into the today's plans, I can't see any um, plan of um, the um, DB, Nets, uh, DB Net rail infrastructure for improving um, the um, situation in Hamburg, in particular for the rail crossings um, of the River Elbe. Okay, so far so good, a ride on rail through the Hansebelt region and um, I stop um, the presentation sharing here and hand over to Lars um, for the next presentation. Thank you very much. Yes, dear Mr. Ulrich, thank you very much for your interesting presentation on the subject of rail freight transport in the Hansebelt region. The railway, I think, a mode of transport that will continue to be of enormous importance for our region in the future. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just uh, a short uh, um, remark from my side. Uh, if you have any questions to Mr. Ulrich's presentation and to Mr. Ulrich himself, please use our chat function to ask your questions. We will come back to your questions at the end of the session. But now we will change the mode of transport, so to say, from rail to road. Uh, I would like warmly well, I would like to warmly welcome Mr. Mark Bodenau, Managing Director of Spedition Bode GmbH and Co. KG from Rheinfeld. Um, Mr. Bode, the title of your presentation is now Future Mobility from the Perspective of a Carrier. An exciting topic that we can look forward to very much and I hereby give you the floor on the virtual stage. Please start with your presentation. Thank you very much that you are supporting us today. Yes, I hope you can hear me well and see my presentation. Yes. Um, okay, then I will start. Uh, yeah, thank you, Lars, for the introduction. And uh, yeah, um, we already heard some interesting facts about the rail transport in the Lübeck region um, from Mr. Ulrich. But we can be sure that uh, always uh, one mode of transport needs another mode. So. Um, in the growing economies, we already um, know that we have big challenges standing in front of us. And yeah, our transport, road transport, has one of the biggest challenges, I guess, because as Mr. Ulrich already mentioned, we have 80%, almost 80% of the transport is going by road. So there's a lot to do. And yeah. I'm going to talk about the future mobility from the perspective of a carrier and uh, I'm going to talk about some yeah, different engines we are using. Um, yeah, a short overview of the agenda today. Um, I'm going to start with a little introduction. I think not everyone in uh, in the chat and uh, watching knows about Spedis and Bode. Um, then we are going to talk about some LNG um, proportion, then uh, the overhead electric proportion, some uh, diesel we are already used to and is the main uh, used engine at the moment. And not last but not least, um, we are going to talk about hydrogen um, and a little conclusion from my perspective. Uh, yeah, short overview. We are a family business. Um, some facts. We run about uh, 80 own trucks where we have uh, 73, uh, nee, 37 uh, LNG trucks and one overhead electric truck and almost uh, 800 trailers and containers. A little disbalance there because um, we also do a lot of rail transport and uh, sorts sea shipping, uh, dif difficult word. Um, yeah, we also do some warehousing and have our own workshop and truck wash. Yeah, our motivation, we are future oriented. We are a family comp a company, as I already mentioned. So we always think for our further generations. 
sustainable thinking is one thing we um, pretty much uh, think. I think my grandfather he he always um, yeah keeps some space on the on our yard for for some sustainable some gardening and everything. So it's pretty much in our history, and we are promote new technologies as an early adapter. That's one of our goals. Um, yeah, I start with LNG because um, this is yeah the one and only um, technology which is yeah user ready at the moment. We have uh, around about forty five filling stations around Germany, so it's getting better and better every week. The network is getting yeah more structured, and uh, that helps us a lot. We have higher acquisition cost, around about 40% higher than a diesel. Um, but there is some toll exemptions, which uh, help us to 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 yeah, make make ends meet with with the LNG. Um, the fuel price is slightly be below diesel, and yeah, we have less CO2 fine dust and NOx emissions. Um, perspective, the LNG. Um, the network is getting bigger and bigger, so that won't be a problem in the future. Um, the CO2 tax will drive the price, but it will also drive the price for diesel, so that won't be the big thing if you compare it to diesel. Um, yeah, if the toll exemption expires, we need to have acquisition cost definitely lower than it's at the moment. And the future perspective, which makes it very interesting for me, is uh, liquefied biogas in the future. If yeah, you don't use fossil energy for the LNG, then it's yeah getting more and more environmental friendly, and that's a, a good-looking perspective to my side. Um, electric overhead line, uh, yeah, that's our pilot project here in between Rheinfeld and Lübeck. Uh, I put a map in here so you can see where the so-called e-highway is. Um, yeah, from our yard, it goes on the Autobahn R1, and then we have five kilometers which are electrified. Um, yeah, most of our traffic um, goes to the Lübeck Harbor, Scandinavian Kai and uh, Zeeland Kai. So we use this uh, track a lot and therefore, yeah, we are running it. We have at the moment one truck in operation. Um, four more are coming. So we have then five in total to, to test this. Yeah. Sometimes we have issues with the, with the track, but that's, I think, normal because it's a pilot project. So, um, yeah. And we have two more uh, tracks in Germany. One is always running in uh, Hessen. It goes to the airport of Frankfurt. And one is still in con construction. It's in uh, Baden-Württemberg. Yeah, there you can see how it looks like. Um, our electric overhead, it's a diesel hybrid truck. Yes. And um, yeah, we take the, the electric from the, from the overhead line and charge the battery also inside the truck. Yeah, perspective, if this technology should be one of the, our future mobility, we need to expand the, the network a lot. Um, that's huge cost of infrastructure, um, but I think if you electrify the the truck industry, it's always a, a massive investment in infrastructure. Even if you electrify the parking slots or everything, that always causes infrastructure costs, which are huge. Yeah, I'm keep on going yeah we are now a combustion diesel engine um, that's our main business at the moment lowest acquisition costs infrastructure is developed with all the gas stations um, we have a tall price per kilometer 
Um, yeah, and the diesel price, yeah, sometimes it goes up, it goes down, but I think in the future with the CO2 um, price, it, it has to go up. So um, it's more and more expensive to, to run a diesel in the future, but it's very high efficient because, yeah, the, the motors have 80 years of history, so it's been a, developed a lot, so the efficiency is quite good. Um, perspective, yeah, diesel price is going to rise, but uh, yeah, when you see the short term, there will be, I think, no no uh, replacement for the for the diesel truck in the short term. But in the long term, we have to do and find solutions. Um, but I think the diesel will just take part in in very special cases of track of transport so mainly i think it's going to disappear in the future long term <sighs> last but not least hydrogen um, that's the only technology we are not running in our company but that's just the case because um, it's not market ready at the moment um, we try to to do something with like a pilot project with the overhead line with hydrogen, but it's not ready yet. Um, yeah, the problem is uh, always no infra, almost no infrastructure. We have a little infrastructure in Germany for uh, cars, filling stations by hydrogen, but not for trucks. So that needs to build up from the ground. Um, low efficiency, but it's totally environmental friendly. So that's a positive thing. Um, the technology exists in Germany. In Germany, I think Mercedes is almost over 20 years, but uh, it has been and hasn't been developed a lot. So there's some research and development to do in the future. And yeah, a hydro hydrogen network needs to build up. But I think that's quite easy for us because we already know since the last years how we build up a station network. Um, it's compared to electrified network, somehow it looks like overhead or uh, parking stations, loading stations. Um, this hydrogen network would be easier to build up in comparison. Yeah, little conclusion from my side. Um, at the moment, LNG, the only thing which is reliable and uh, market ready at the moment um, but there needs to be something with the acquisition cost these are too high for the future if the the toll exemption will expire um, yeah more and more alternative propulsions will be available in the future yeah, hydrogen will come, full electric will come, but this also needs, all needs infrastructure. Um, big chances uh, for everyone. I think at the moment, a massive change is happening in the industry. So you, you see the, the OEMs, they're doing a lot uh, already in the, in the car industry. We are quite good keeping up electrified with Tesla and all this um, stuff. So there is a massive change, and uh, I'm I'm pretty sure yeah, we can make big jumps uh, in the short term to to develop. Um, yeah, some 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 negatives or some some causes from my side. Um, yeah, high investment costs are one of the the most. Um, yeah, the most um, things we are we are forcing because uh, facing because um, the technology will will bring high initial cost and that is a problem for a mid-sized carrier like we are, and uh, there we need some some subsidized by the by the government or yeah so that we can take risk and uh, invest in in new technologies like the overhead. Uh, electrified railway here on the R1s. Yeah, um, this is, I think, all I have to say for now. Uh, I'm glad for your attention and hope 
where we are discuss some questions uh, after every uh, presentation. Thank you, and I head over to Lars. Yes, thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and the comparison um, of the different driving technologies in road freight transport, um, technologies that are already in use in our region today. Um, yes, and thanks again to you. Ladies and gentlemen, regarding the time, uh, a short reminder from my side about uh, the possibility to ask your questions in our chat. Please feel free to do so. Uh, and now, uh, we come over to our third speaker of today. Now it goes on the water side. For this, I warmly welcome Mr. Marco Möller, Manager Special Projects at Scandlines Deutschland GmbH. Um, now Mr. Möller will present to us the current developments in the ferry traffic under the title Sustainable Ferry Operations in the Scanmed Corridor. Mr. Möller studied business administration at the University of Rostock and started his working life as a research assistant at the Department of Transport and Logistics at University of Rostock in the year 2007. And since 2011, he is employed at Scandlines Deutschland. He is part of the route management and terminal operations team. And he has almost 10 years of experience with various projects within Scandlines, including a special focus on application and project management for several EU co-financed activities around Scandlines Green Agenda. Mr. Möller, a very warm welcome. I will now hand over to you and we look forward to your presentation. The stage is yours now. Thank you, for, uh, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, Lars, for the very kind introduction. Could you just shortly say that you can see my first slide and then you can hear me? Uh, I can hear you, but we cannot see your presentation. So all the training was useless. <laughs> yeah, something happened. Uh -huh. Yes. Huh, so well done. Then good afternoon to all uh, the listeners. Uh, on the screen and maybe at Weissenhäuser Strand. Um, yeah, our topic for, for our um, session here was is sustainable transport and mobility and green corridor. And as Lars Wefstedt uh, just mentioned, I will represent the, the maritime perspective now. And uh, yeah, just as ferry traffic is, so to say, the very characteristic way of transportation in the uh, ScanMed corridor. Uh, yeah, I will just try to to yeah to bring you or to, to present you some of the experiences with sustainable uh, ferry operations in, in the corridor. And yes, I chose a, a bit a bulky title for my presentation, sustainable ferry operation in the ScanMed corridor, but actually this is what we do here, and you will just see it in the next slide, uh, why this is very, um, why our ferry lines are very important in, in this corridor. And um, we always hear, and I heard more than one time <laughs> during the day today that uh, it is important to get uh, the, uh, the, the traffic or the cargo from, from road to rail, but it is also a European perspective to get it from road to sea because, uh, yes, you can say rail is the most uh, environmental friendly mode of transport, but there are also a lot of opinions that say that uh, shipping is uh, the most uh, environmental friendly mode of transport. I will not uh, <laughs> discuss this further. I think both options are better than pure road transport, but uh, yeah, it's just my, my ambition today to turn your attention also to the to the maritime perspective and that uh, there is uh, a lot of yeah, development happening right now in the in the maritime uh, business and as you can see on the picture the our ferry Copenhagen which is was just recently equipped with a rotor sail which is a very modern tech technology and you can also 
see the hybrid um, wording on the ferry app, but I will go more deeper uh, later on. Yeah. So this is the yeah <laughs> the usual commercial break. Let's call it like that. But I will really make it very briefly just to know what we are doing here at Scantline. So we are operating uh, two short ferry routes between uh, Budgar and Rötti and between Rostock and Geza, connecting uh, Germany with, with Denmark. And what I did today is I do not did not use the, the normal map I use, but I made a snapshot from from the Tentec portal where you can uh, see the, uh, the, yeah, the corridor, or at least a snapshot of the Scandinavian Mediterranean corridor. And there you can see, hopefully you can see the, the blue arrows there representing the ferry lines that are yeah, a crucial part of this corridor to, to be connected, especially to connect uh, yeah, Northern Germany with Scandinavia. And this is what they are doing. Um, we are on both ferry lines. We are offering um, high frequencies on what we put garden departures every 30 minutes, um, on also Gitze every two hours. And yeah, you can see the, uh, the the statistics on the right side how, uh, with regard to passenger traffic, car traffic, and uh, truck traffic. Just to mention that, especially on the passenger side, these are not the figures from yeah, from last year because of, of course, as you can imagine, that the, the corona uh, pandemic had a strong influence on, on passenger flows. So these numbers are a bit outdated, but we all hope, of course, that after this uh, pandemic is over that we will really fast get to yeah to the usual numbers here just just to mention that besides um the, the transportation transportation as such we are also offering catering services and retail services um, yeah on the ferries and also uh, on board shops in the ports and uh, i just uh, forget to mention uh, and that's the first slide that it's of course not only uh, Rugby Put Garden and Geza Rostock here that are part of the, the ferry network uh, to Scandinavia, but it's especially the ferry lines going from Kiel, from Lübeck, yes, from Put Garden and from Rostock uh, to, to Scandinavia that are forming the, yeah, the maritime part, so to say, of the ScanMed corridor and a very important part also in the future. Yes, and we have a zero emission vision for the future. And this is what I want to bring you a little bit. Yeah, what I want to discuss with the next slide, but maybe just uh, some words for for the Rugby Put Garden service or the B line or in German Vogelfluglinie, as you can call it, which is uh, operating since 1963 already. So you can say they are almost 60 years of experiences to 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 cross the Fema belt uh, by ferry and you can yeah just say that it was a big success story here it is a big success story uh, and there uh, were more than 300 million passengers already transported uh, across the Fema belt via ferry and what is offered there uh, is, is a very tailor-made concept this, this tailor-made ports that are just uh, yeah, constructed for these ferry services and with, with ferries that were just constructed to serve this uh, ferry service. And by doing so, we were able to, yeah, to, to drive this, this ferry service into perfection. <laughs> let's, let's call it like that uh, with, with these departure times uh, every 30 minutes. And this is the very important and uh, yeah, the, the the effect that we are very proud of is this 15 minutes port time. So you can, when you see the ferry uh, embarking in the port, and then you can wait 15 minutes and then it's already going out again because it was unloaded and loaded in this 15 minutes. And by doing so, we are, yeah, we are very proud to say that we are setting worldwide benchmarks here uh, for ferry operation. And what also what is also important that we want to be a pioneers um, uh, with, with green investment, so to make these ferry lines uh, even more sustainable in the future, which is yeah, our topic today here. Um, yeah, this is summarizing the, the green profile and the, the ferries here. You can see these four uh, double-ended ferries for Rugby Put Garden, where we invested more than 38 million in, in the past to yeah to make them more more green and it's especially for for the hybrid propulsion i will just lose some words in the, in the next slide and also for rostock where we 
have uh, yeah have bought uh, completely new ferries uh, which are in operation since 2016 now and where we have also included the the hybrid system and also a flat nut rotor but i will come to this part just in some minutes um yeah this picture is, is was meant to to show you some kind of a timeline here where did we come from and where do we want to go it's <laughs> written a bit small in the middle but um, you can see on the very right uh, side zero emission this is our clear ambition for for both routes so this will be yeah, quite a challenging task here and what we already heard also from from mr bode who presented before for for the road side it's it's even harder for the for the maritime industry to to do this conversions to zero emission because you have to to keep in mind that that a vessel is not bought for five years or 10 years it's bought for 30 40 maybe 50 years so the the, the cycle time is much higher here and this also have to uh, you have to be in mind this when talking about uh, making ferry or not ferry shipping but maritime shipping uh, really zero emission this will take some time but we have uh, already started to do so and we started back in 2011 with with yeah, creating this zero emission and then immediately starting with converting all our ferries to to hybrid which means that we uh, yeah, we uh, cut out one one diesel engine, so to say, and substituted uh, with batteries just to to increase the efficiency uh, of the ferries and to yeah just to to get the the bunker consumption uh, down. And this is what we started on on the Vogelfluglinie, Holti Portgarden, and then later on Rostock Gate as well. But we also have um, yeah, smaller projects here, for example, new thrusters that were made uh, then that were installed to to just to increase the efficiency of the vessel further and also what you see on the very right bottom uh, the, the picture of the copenhagen with the flatner rotor maybe just to mention that we in end of april published uh, our first sustainability report which is meant to yeah just to give our our green strategy more profile and to make it more measurable in the future and there you can see a lot of uh, zeros and zeros so this does <laughs> just want, want to say that it is not only a zero emission in the future but uh, uh, to get more sustainable there are a lot of aspects that you have to consider and uh, we heard about some of them in the morning already when it comes to yeah to um, employees and health and safety and um, food uh, food waste and so on so this is uh, something which is very important it's not only the zero emission but it's yeah is so to say zero emission business as such let's let's put it like that maybe just to, to mention this slide here that you can see that although we had a very tough 2020 with these uh, limitations in passenger traffic we uh, could reach uh, green investments of 4 million euro, especially for, for the rotor sale on the Copenhagen and with a new trust there for the Deutsch, for the Ferry Deutschland, which reduced the CO2 emissions of 10 to 15 percent. Yeah, and and what we also did, we just um, connected, so to say, our, our goals to the uh, European Sustainable Development Goals and we choose this, this five one here, which in our opinion are, yeah, best match for, for our business and which are very good to to measure what we are doing in the future and yeah this is this slide that it's looking very very easy so we are coming from from hybrid ferries and we are doing um, some energy consumption reduction and then we are zero emission ferries of course this is not <laughs> so easy as it looks like here but i just wanted to yeah to, to make it very brief and very maybe easy to understand and the, the middle one this is our focus right now so we just want to get as efficient with with the ferry operation as we can get and the latest examples i already mentioned it where new trust as and the rotor sale i will just mention um, so some i will just have some additional remarks on that but you, you have to, you can just say that we have a lot of bigger and smaller uh, projects running in the, in the background just to get, um, yeah, 
the efficiency down and zero emission ferries in our business, especially for what we put on, will be battery driven. And this is, yes, you can say a, a bit a uh, niche solution because uh, you have a lot of um, areas where you can say, okay, battery electric solutions are not the best way. When we think about the trucks, for example, where uh, it's uh, nobody could imagine that uh, you can uh, build enough batteries in a truck that it is going zero emission only with batteries. There yeah. may be hydrogen, as we heard this morning already, is, is a better solution. But here on this short ferry route, and especially uh, on, on a route or in a corridor, when the ferry only goes from A to B and from B to A, you have very predictable energy consumption. And this makes uh, this uh, battery solution very feasible here. And in our opinion, the, yeah, the natural choice to do so. and not to think about uh, hydrogen or maybe other new technologies will, which will be very important in the future. But we think that for these short uh, routes, uh, the battery solution is the most uh, promising one. And I will not go into details uh, how this could, could look like. We have seen uh, some examples of zero emission ferries with batteries already, especially in Norway with, yes, smaller ferries and shorter routes, but there you can already see uh, that this is working. For example, our, our partner route uh, from Helsingborg to Helsingborg, which also operates with shorter, shorter ves uh, vessels and uh, uh, on, on a shorter route is uh, partly uh, converted to the emission already, but yes, uh, there, there will be, um, some, there are some, some challenges to be solved in the future. And now I will just go to my, my last example here, which is the rotor sill installation. That is our, so to say, our newest green investments. And this was done uh, for the for the Rostock Gates service. And here you can just see some yeah, explanations. I will not go into details here, uh, but just to mention that um, that the target for us is to save four to five percent of uh, additional four to five percent of, of energy uh, during um, every trip with this with this rotor sale which sounds not so much but at the end four to five percent for every trip is something and you can say that the more efficient you are with your um, with your transport the harder it is yeah, to, to get better because then you have yeah, as, you, as you can always or as it is always said, the low hanging fruits are not available anymore. So you have uh, done everything to get your um, energy consumption down. So then you can say that four to 5% uh, is quite something. And the very favorable here on Rostock Geza is um, that the wind conditions, which have to come from the side are very attractive here. And we are only, again, we are only going from A to B and from B to A. So the, the area we are operating is uh, very, uh, easy to predict, so to say. And just to see that it's not only uh, a graphic, but it's reality already here. You can see the rotor sail on the uh, Copenhagen it was installed last year in May. And we have nearly finished the, the testing right now. We also did some, some speed performance tests uh, end of March this year, which were yeah, very promising and at the end uh, confirmed our expectations with regard to the uh, bunker consumption reduction. And maybe it's also important to mention that we are part of an indirect project here. So just to say that uh, international cooperation is reality already now. So we are there working with, with uh, a lot of universities and with, with other uh, ship owners to test and uh, to validate these kind of installations and just to contribute uh, yeah, to the to the uh, EU goals there. Yes, and with these words, I have already got to my last slide. Yeah, thank you for your attention, and I would like to go get back to Mr. Wevstedt, Lars. There. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Muller. Thank you very much for your presentation and the insight into current and future developments in the field of sustainable ferry traffic in this gunmet corridor. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, regarding the ongoing time, um, I got the information that there are still no questions um, from your side in our chat so far. And um, yes, uh, as I already mentioned, unfortunately, our time has already run out. 
Um, so I think uh, we have to close now this session. On behalf of the Branch Network Log, Reg Log Regio, uh, I would like to thank you, our guests, and especially, of course, our speakers um, of our parallel session, Sustainable Transport and Mobility Green Corridor. Thanks uh, to Mr. Ulrich, Mr. Bode, and Mr. Müller. We would also like to thank the organizers and supporters of the fifth Fehmarn Belt Days. And um, yes, uh, now enjoy the ongoing program of the fifth Fehmarn Belt Days. And I hope that we will meet again personally and without uh, restrictions in the context of the Corona pandemic at the sixth Fehmarn Belt Days. Thank you very much for being our guests today. Goodbye and stay safe. I have to say goodbye. <laughs>